Hey everyone, we're back again this week and we're bringing you our tips for holiday accommodation on a budget. At the moment we're on holiday, we're on um, holiday in Queensland and we are at this beautiful place in Mount Tambourine and it is wonderful. It's near the Gold Coast if you're wondering. Yeah, up in the mountains is amazing. Our tips today are going to be in order from the least expensive to the to a more expensive end of the scale, I guess. First on the list uh, would be staying with friends and family. Obviously this is going to be the cheapest option. Um, you're probably not going to be charged by your family for staying with them, unless they're horrible people. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, all, that's often quite a good option, uh, as they'll have all of the things that you need. Uh, they'll have you know, places place for you to sleep. It might not be the most comfortable place. Probably it be on be the just couch. A mattress on the floor or on the or on the couch, but still, it will be uh, good to spend time with your family as well as uh, it's yeah very cheap. They also might be able to help you out with uh, transport sometimes if they have like a spare car, or they might be able to drive you around places if you need them to. Um, they probably already also know like all the good places to go where they live as well. Yeah, so they have good tips on places to visit and things to do and cool activities. Alright, option number two is a bit similar but um, it's house swap or house sitting for your family and friends. Um, we have a good story about house sitting. Um, about 11 years ago uh, my sister was getting married and Adahi just got home from his mission and his sister um, was going to house sit our house for us. So he slept in my room in my bed before we even knew each other <laughs> and then a year later we were married. So. I didn't do any snooping around. Yeah, just didn't even snoop around. Because that's not what I'm into. <laughs> um, I would totally to... <laughs> snoop around. Um, but yeah, if you're house sitting uh, or house swapping with family and friends, we've quite often done this and our families do this. Uh, we have family who live up in Tauranga and family who live in Palmerston North. And often during school holidays, they will swap houses so that they can um, yeah get a holiday and it's free. And you have the security of somebody looking after your house. They're going to feed your cat, feed your dog. You don't have to send them to like the... What are you? Kennels. The kennels or whatever you send cats and dogs to during while you're on vacation. Um, yeah, so it's a really good budget option. Um, you're probably going to have more comfortable accommodation if you're rather than if you're just sharing a house with your family because you know you can sleep in their bed. All right, the third option uh, is camping. Uh, it's a fun experience uh, usually for most people, uh, getting out into nature and um, getting away from the hustle and bustle of the city life. Yeah. Um, Obviously there's a bit of uh, money involved in the initial setup, like buying a tent and buying they all those things. They can be expensive, that... those tents. But you can go to Kmart super cheap, they're like <laughs> 200 bucks. Yeah, so getting the, all those things, the tent and the sleeping bags and the things that you'll take camping with you would uh, probably be the uh, uh, expensive part of, of camping. But yeah, once you've got all those things accumulated, uh, then yeah, it, it can be pretty cheap. Just um, Staying in campgrounds. campgrounds so like, you, there are places like that. that you can camp for free. Other places are like twelve dollars a night for a family, which is incredible. And usually they are in really nice places, like at the beach or by rivers and things like that. Yeah, yeah I have good memories of camping when I was a kid. That's for sure. You can accumulate the things over time, and I look on like uh, secondhand sites like Gumtree or Trade Me. Yeah. Facebook Marketplace. Lots of people are going to be seen selling their tents and stuff like that at the end of the season. Um, and hardly them have hardly been used because people buy them and then they never use them. Okay, we're up to option number four now, which is probably our favourite, is that uh, Airbnb. That's where we're staying right now in a nice Airbnb place uh, here in Mount Tambourine. It's got three bedrooms. Um, they got everything that we could possibly need. Like they even had groceries for us when we arrived, spare nappies, um, washing powder. But yeah, Airbnbs are great because you have your own kitchen. You can make your own meal, it's easier for the kids to keep to their routine and things like that. Um, there's a lot more room than if you were having like a hotel or something like that. And they actually work out a lot cheaper than a hotel too. Like this place was $90 a night. Um, hotels around here are probably going, uh, were about $180 to $190. Um, and because we've booked for two weeks, we got a discount as well. If you book for a, like a full week, you usually get a discount. Um, sometimes up to 50%, which is amazing. Mm. Yeah. Makes things a bit cheaper and easier. Um, yeah, just not being in somebody else's way. Um, yeah. You've got the freedom to come and go, I guess, as you please. 
Um, you can stay home and have a relaxing day if you want to. Um, and yeah, it's good to have like a nice little, I guess, base of operations, um, place where you can, you know, if you've got like a fridge and things, uh, you, can, you can store your food and yeah. You don't have to worry about eating out all the time like a lot of people do when they're on holidays. Yeah, hotel rooms and stuff don't usually have kitchens. Yeah. And eating out is expensive, especially if you're on a budget. Um, it can easily cost $100 a night just for like dinner and then you've got breakfast, you've got lunch. It just, it really adds up if you're having to cook every night and it gets old. Like especially going out for three meals a night with three meals a day with kids. It's, exhausting like who wants to do that nobody wants to do that airbnbs are also great because if you're going with like um another family or something yeah. you can fit a lot of people in you can fit a lot of people in and you can split the cost we went to the states with my parents and we um had oh gosh i don't know how many people like 11 people all together i think and we were able to split the costs um which made it even cheaper for us and cheaper for my parents as well all right that brings us to option number five uh which is motels now it's getting up, I guess, a little bit towards the higher end of the spectrum. Yeah. When we go to a motel, often it's just for like a one night uh, stay, if we're just like traveling through a place. Yeah. Uh, and they can be pretty good because they often come with like a breakfast uh, in the morning, yeah. uh, included in the in the cost. Um, so they usually have like good. a pool as well, which is really good if you're traveling. The kids can get out and have a good swim afterwards and yeah, nice be relaxing. exhausted for the night and <laughs> have something to do, have some fun while yeah. we're while you stay there. Alright, option number six is a hotel. Um, this is definitely the most expensive option. Like, hands down the most expensive yeah, option. Yeah, they can get pretty high up there. Easily $300 a night for a family of our size. Um, yeah, and also depending on where the hotel is. Absolutely. Like if it's in a busy city or if it's like in a uh, a nice area, I guess. Yeah. Uh, then they can just check out the prices a bit. All right, so we were traveling through Sydney um, on our way down from Melbourne, and we were going to stay in a hotel, and the hotel prices were like three hundred and fifty dollars. That was about the cheapest that I could find um, for a hotel. Um, in the end, we ended up staying with my brother for free, which is good. He actually just moved into his house. We he hadn't even stayed in there one night, and we stayed there. The hotels don't really cater for large families, if it's just one or two people it's a lot cheaper, definitely a lot cheaper, but um, for families it's not a budget friendly option. Uh, they don't usually include breakfast or if they do include breakfast you're going to have to pay like an arm and a leg for about $20 per person for breakfast and six people, what's six times twenty? Hundred and twenty dollars? Yeah. Just for breakfast, like come on people, save your money. And again like they don't always have uh a lot of the things that you might want as a as a small family, like a fridge in the yeah. in the rooms. Um. And it's super small as well, like usually the most beds that you can get in there is like two beds. So those are our options for holiday accommodation or vacation accommodation, depending on where you live, what you call it. From the least expensive all the way down to the most expensive. Uh, we thought we'd also share like just a few tips on trying to find the best deals and things like that. Um, the first tip, if you are going to get a hotel, look on places like Groupon and things because you can sometimes get really good deals. We stayed in Las Vegas and we got uh, a hotel room for $15 a night which was fucking amazing. Try avoid traveling on weekends because on weekends they're going to up the price as well. Definitely up the price. Yeah, Friday nights, Saturday nights. Sunday yeah, nights. definitely expensive. So try so travel more mid during the middle of the week. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if you're going to stay in like an Airbnb or things like that Try stay for a full week because then you'll get the discount. If you're just traveling between two places and it's a travel day and you want to stay somewhere, try stay not in a main city. Try stay like just outside of a main city when we're traveling back down to Melbourne or up to Melbourne. I don't know where we are to be honest. We're north of Melbourne, so we'll be traveling down. Across? Across to Melbourne. Down. Whatever. When we go back to Melbourne, we're going to be heading towards Canberra as well. And in Canberra, prices are expensive. We're going to stay just outside of Canberra, about 35 minutes outside of Canberra, and the prices are like 70% less, which is great. Great savings. Yeah, and we don't mind the extra 30 minute drive because we're going that way anyway. So yeah, if you stay outside of the major cities, you're going to save a lot of money. And that's what we like. We like to save money. Alright, so those are our tips and our tricks for saving money on holiday accommodation, vacation accommodation. Um, you can do it for cheap, you can do it for expensive, but we like to do it for as cheap as we possibly can. Yeah, enjoy spending, you know, spending money on things that you enjoy doing, yeah. experiences and, and visiting places and doing things together. Making um, the memories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
rather than spending a lot of money on the places where you're staying. Because you're probably not going to spend much time there anyway. You're just going to be sleeping there. Yeah. yeah. All right. We will see you next week, probably still from the Gold Coast. We'll actually be traveling next Saturday, but the video will be posted. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed the video today. So please don't forget to like, comment, and share this video with uh, people who you think might benefit from it. I uh, would really appreciate that. We'll see you later.